Welcome to the GTN Show. Yes, welcome. And this week's show, one of the world's best, announces her retirement. And Iron Man are embracing anti-drafting technology at last. Plus, a crazy new aero helmet. And we look ahead to the start list of the first two big races of a massive year of racing in 2024. Okay, it's on the show as we always do with React, and the whole trial world was buzzing this week with some news, a bit of a shock announcement by the great Daniela Reef. Hey guys, I have an important announcement to make, which didn't feel easy. I've reached more than I ever could have dreamed of in the last 20 years as a professional athlete with my 10 world champion titles and the breaking the world record. That's why I'm happy but also sad to announce today that this will be my last season as a professional athlete. Yep, Daniela Reef is retiring at the end of this year. A bit of a surprise. She's not exactly old, uh, but yeah, she's had a very successful career. She said after 20 years in professional sport, 10 world titles and breaking the world record, I've reached more than ever I dreamed of. That's why I'm sad and happy to announce that this will be my last season as a professional athlete. It simply feels the time is right. However, it's the end. She's announced the retirement, but it's not actually the end. It's the beginning of the end because she's got a big year of racing. She signed up for the T100 series, which means six T100 races, including the grand final. Uh, she's also doing Ironman South Africa shortly in April, uh, which will qualify her for the Ironman World Champs in Nice, which is also on her list to do this year. So uh, yeah, hopefully she'll be going out on a bang. We're definitely following her last year. Uh, yeah, we wish her all the best for the last year. And of course, congratulations on the amazing career she's had so far. Yeah, and she's she's being open with her second post since that, um, basically saying that if anyone wants to know anything about her training, and normally we don't see Daniela sharing that much, so I no. think quite a lot of people will be interested. Um, one of the first comments I actually noticed under that, so she basically she said, as it marks my final season, 2024, as a professional athlete, I'll be documenting my year to share more about my training and also bits of my everyday life with you. What aspects are you interested in seeing? Um, and Ruth Astle has put, I'd like to know more about your wine cellar and your favourite wines, which might be a, um, not what the <laughs> most common question I imagine and then there's more around training obviously underneath that so it will be interesting to see if Daniela opens up a little bit because I think she's always been quite a sort of closed book and people are obviously intrigued to see just um yeah so how, she's going to give she away trains. all her secrets in the final year yeah and pan them on to her so then yeah <laughs> the she'll <laughs> exactly <laughs> but it is a shame I think that um when it comes to the world champs being her like maybe a final big big race that Lucy's not racing yeah so that's a that's yeah. one thing that I when I when I heard that I was like oh or who knows, maybe she'll uh, win it and then go, no, I can't leave it there. I'm going to go back to Kona one more time. Yeah. And, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. At the moment, we've got the World Indoor Athletics Championships happening in Glasgow in Scotland in the UK. And uh, there's been some incredible performances and lots of world records and things. There was one that particularly caught my eye, partly because I'm inspired by any woman who's had a baby and is coming back. Um, <laughs> what any inspiration I can get. But um, Ellie St. Pierre um, won the 3,000 metre World championship title less than a year after having her baby so her baby's birthday I think is two days after she's just become world champion um, which is just a very cool story and she was silver medalist from the previous um, so two years before that so um, yeah pretty impressive to be a silver medalist become a mother and then win win the world championships so. pressure's on then as soon as, <laughs> I mean, as, soon as that little, I'm inspired as soon I'm as that little guy pops up we're going to start the clock you know? oh yeah <laughs> you have less than a year yeah, no no pressure just joking uh, we also saw this prototypes of the of Instagram or protos of Instagram uh, a new Nike shoe possibly debuting at the at the Tokyo Marathon we're not actually sure whether it was on the feet of Elliot Kipchoge at that Tokyo Marathon marathon mm. although Elliot Kipchoge didn't have a great day so he's not blaming the shoes um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe uh, anyway they are they do look pretty interesting uh, the dev 15 approved for use but only by a few uh, special certain athletes uh, it's quite interesting because Nike just keeps progressing their mm. crazy carbon shoes uh, and this one is yeah apparently uh, the next iteration we don't know what it's called or anything yet uh, as we said Eli Kipchoge potentially wearing them it's hard to really tell those Lumo green shoes whether they were actually those prototypes uh, but he said I can only say that sport is about good days and bad days unfortunately today was a bad day for me I want to congratulate all the participants who reached the finish line pursuing their goals and dreams uh, 
His bad day was a 206 <laughs> marathon. And, oh, it's uh, a good yeah, isn't He it? finished in the top 10 still. Mm -hmm. uh, the race was won by Benson Kipruto of Kenya. Uh, and the women's race was won by Satume Kibere of Ethiopia. Uh, yeah, uh, Eliud Kipchoge, though, having a bad day there um, at uh, the Tokyo Marathon. Yeah, I'm sure we will see him back to his winning ways again soon. Um, a post that I spotted that's a combination through Beth Potter and Santara Technology. She is teaming up with them. It's a little video clip where she talks about some of the benefits that she's hoping to, to gain from this all-important Olympic year. Yeah, big year. And we'll talk more about the first races of that season coming up soon. Uh, but first, I had to check that it was the 1st of March and not the 1st of April when I saw this post because it's ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous. Cyclists. Are... Anyway, we haven't seen any triathletes wearing this new helmet that uh, Team Visma Lisa Bach uh, has debuted uh, to the world at the latest time trial. Uh, and goodness me, it is next level, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what to say about it. To well, be I mean, you should just read the comments beneath. Yeah, Some of exactly. them aren't readable, but um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, ridiculous. Tells you enough. The sport always finds a way to make itself more and more embarrassing, one one. Uh, commenter says uh, and another one says when you get AR to design a TT helmet uh, it does kind of look like it's something out of science fiction uh, we haven't seen any triathletes wearing it yet but I yet. reckon it's only a matter of time exactly <laughs> all right on to try news and we are just days away from the much anticipated T100 the PTO tour as it was called um, they have announced the full start list although since the official announcement some have already dropped out since then so um, I expect it might be varied a little bit again by the time of the race on the weekend but the women's field has had the most I guess criticism or surprise just purely because of those top 20 that they had contracted there's actually I think now only 11 that are racing so it was down to 12 because eight weren't going to race and then we've just had a last minute um, injury from Imogen Simmons so she's pulled out as well. So it does mean the likes of Laura Phillip, Ashley Gentle, Taylor Nib, Chelsea Sodaro are a few of those names that aren't racing. However, yeah. it's still a very exciting field. I don't think it's that surprising, to be honest. I mean, there's a good few women who are on their contracted list who are actually focusing on the Olympic Games and therefore yeah. well, those, short yeah, course. Of course. And then, of course, they only contracted to do six of the eight. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to skip one, the early season one where you're definitely not informing it is the one to skip, isn't it? You just have so, to hope that the yeah, rest of your well, year yeah, goes smoothly, doesn't give don't you? Any, any, uh, any cushion Leeway. later on in the season, but still, uh, it, you, you, if you're not informed anyway, you're not going to do well. So I guess it makes a lot of sense. Uh, interesting, though, that the men's is pretty much full. Uh, so those uh, wild cards are Lucy Buckingham, Jody Stimson, who have been drafted in to replace the contract athletes that couldn't race. Hayley Chura and Jackie Herring uh, are also in there. Sarah. Sarah Perez Sala, Marta Sanchez, uh, both strong swimmers, and Didi Diedrichs and an Estonian Kaida Kivioja, sorry, Kivioja, uh, are, are in there too. So it's still a very strong oh, field. Gotcha. I mean, we've got Anne Haug, Lucy Charles Barkey, Kat Matthews, Paula Finley, Daniela Reef, just to name a few. Yep. So it's going to be pretty exciting. We're, we're in for a treat for sure. Yeah. <laughs> On the men's side, only three wild cards have uh, been slotted in for, for absent athletes. That's Yuri Kulin, uh, Mena Kuhlhaus, and Gregory Barnaby, who are joining the list of, well, the very strong list because almost everyone who's contracted is yeah. there. Uh, clearly the old the, Olympians, I guess. Clearly, the men are ready to go, uh, really much more ready mm. to go, or just gonna more, throw it out there and see. More yeah. confident yeah. Uh, in uh, their off season form, I suppose. Yeah. I guess it's also in the part that so many of them didn't know that they were going to be contracted until like fairly, you know, not that yeah. long ago. So it, it would be interesting next year, it might not be quite such a sort of reshuffle. At the it did all happen start. quite quite late in the day. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting race because it's actually on a speedway, which is, I think, 20 laps or something. Are they doing of this Do you mean speedway? uninteresting? Well, <laughs> no, well, <laughs> interesting in that it's not a very interesting course. <laughs> so uh, not a lot can happen. I mean, it's there's no corners, there's no 90 degree turns, there's but no 180 wishes. degree turns. It's just head down and power for the whole bike leg, which will be interesting. It'll suit some people, but it might not suit others. Either way, we'll be tuning in for the first mm. race of this T100 series and see what all the fuss is about. All right, and some industry news now, uh, especially for those people in the UK. Wiggle has been bought by Fraser's Group. Now, this is actually, we, we kind of saw this coming because Wiggle was in a bit of trouble. It was reported in October last year that they were under a lot of debt, like 26 million in debt. Uh, but they've been bought by Fraser's Group, which actually bought Evan, Cycli Evan Cycles back in... Uh, 2018, I think it was, for about 8 million euros. They've been bought for less than 10 million pounds, which is, uh, yeah, 
very cheap, especially because the Times is also reporting that they've also acquired all their intellectual property rights for the in-house brands. That's Vitus Bikes, uh, DHB, Lifeline products, uh, which is a lot of brands and a lot of equity for a very, very cheap price. Although, I guess for Wiggle employees and Wiggle uh, customers, etc., it's pretty good news because yeah. it hopefully gets them out of trouble um, and no longer in as much trouble. Uh, but it is worth pointing out that when they acquired Evan Cycles a few years ago, they did end up laying off more than 300 employees in restructuring. So not completely out of the woods yet, but I hopefully we won't see Wiggle disappearing anytime soon. On to tech news now, and Super Sapiens sound like they might be in trouble. This is the continuous blood glucose monitors, which you might have spotted us using in a couple of videos when we did our man with no fuel. There's little discs that you've probably seen a lot of athletes wearing on their arms. Now, these were, I think, peak popularity <laughs> one to two years ago. Everyone seemed to be using them and talking about the, the numbers that they were getting from them and maybe it's dwindled out slightly. Now it's ominous um, wording that they've used here because <laughs> they have basically apparently sent an email out to all of their customers confirming that memberships have been terminated and they are no longer going to be shipping any devices yet they yeah. say they are under some restructuring. Yes, yeah, strategic restructuring they've called it. However, <laughs> they've terminated all memberships. You will have access to the data that is currently on the app for 45 to 60 days. They will not ship out any more glucose monitors and uh, beyond that, yeah, there will be no support for the app or anything else. So it feels a little more, more like winding down mm. than restructuring. Uh, they were embroiled in a little bit of controversy a year ago at the Estrada Bianchi because uh, uh, the third place finisher, uh, Kirsten Voltner, actually wore one during the event. Didn't actually monitor her glucose mm. during the event or look at the app or anything like that. Finished third, and then afterwards the UCI stripped that result from her, disqualified her for using the monitoring device in an event. Uh, but yeah, that all kind of blew over after that, and they were still out and about, and people were using them in training. And now it seems like, well, they were in a bit of trouble. We're not really sure. They say they're restructuring and they're going to be more medical device, etc. But uh, yeah, it sounds like if you are using it or have been relying on it, you're going to have to find another solution in 45 to 60 days. Yeah, well, interesting to hear. Um, in quite exciting news in the world of triathlon, Ironman have agreed or come up with an agreement with Race Ranger Technology, the, the company that basically are designed to these devices that will prevent or hope to limit drafting. We've used them in several videos before and we first saw this actually get used on the professional circuit in the PTO tour last year. Yeah, I was actually out there in Ibiza when they used that in the first uh, PTO tour race uh, and it worked quite well. We got all the pros reactions and they have these little lights on the back of them that go blue or orange depending on where you are in the draft zone. It doesn't actually like red flag you or mm. give you a penalty uh, but it's information both for the rider itself on what the draft distance is, whether they're in it or out of it, which is always very difficult to judge just about eyeballing it. Uh, and it also gives that same information to the referees about how close that athlete is. Uh, where so that they don't have to eyeball it. It's really good technology and really useful for uh, non-drafting races. Uh, but the race organizers have, until this point anyway, been kind of reluctant to actually embrace it and use it. Uh, as we say, the PTO used it last year, uh, but Ironman not really said anything about it. But they did test it at Ironman Florida, apparently they were happy with it. And Jimmy Riccatello has now said that it will be used for the entire Ironman Pro Series this year. That is the $1.7 million Pro Series this year uh, that they launched earlier. Uh, it's, well, I think it's a really good a good thing. Uh, Jimmy Riccatello said, after years of collaboration and testing, formalizing a partnership with Ray Ranger and his team is an exciting step. During twist testing at the 2023 Ironman Florida Triathlon, we saw encouraging data from Race Ranger's continued improvements, giving us confidence to implement the technology at 2024 Ironman Pro Series. I mean, this clearly comes from both directions. Ironman going to put $1.7 million in. They need to make sure the races yeah. are fair. They can't have drafting uh, complaints afterwards. At the same time, Race Ranger's gone through the whole of 2023, testing at various events around the world, and they now got to the point where they feel like they're good enough for the biggest races in the world. So yeah, now we're gonna see it 
pretty much everywhere because I'm pretty sure the T100 is also using yeah, it. So, yeah, yeah, we're going to see it at all the major races. You're going to see Race Ranger there, which is a big step in the right direction. Yeah, but I mean, interestingly, it's not, like you say, it doesn't flag them up. It's more for the referees to go and say, oh, okay, so-and-so looks, this is on the app, they're close, yeah. and they've got to hopefully get there in time to catch people. But I think also it'll just, for the, the honest athletes, they'll know where they should be. But yeah. the ones who are dishonest, they will be, they'll get peer pressure from the other, from their other athletes. Yeah, because the other athletes can see the, the colour of the lights. Actually, we spoke to James Elvery when I was out in Ibiza, and the plan is in the future to actually be able to record mm. data where you can say after the race and you can analyze okay. the data and say, this particular athlete spent 10 minutes within the zone. All the other athletes spent less than two minutes. So this athlete was taking chances. One to watch uh, next you know, time. You can start mm. seeing data more in depth. And also the other, the other thing would be obviously their penalties themselves if they are allocated. A race ranger wants to build like zones where you can roll into the penalty tent and as soon as you stop the race ranger itself actually times your penalty and tells you when to go again so there's no like oh a referee's got to hold a stopwatch and start you and stop you and everything because that's obviously the enforcement of the actual penalties mm. is another problem that needs to be solved by technology and hopefully race ranger can do that too either way it's exciting to see technology improving the fairness of racing On to race results, and it does feel like the season is getting underway now because we had Ironman New Zealand on the weekend and some really top performances. Most notably in the women's field, it was former world champion Chelsea Sodaro back in incredible form. She won the race, but with a really consistent performance um, and ran a 2.49 marathon, which apparently only four men um, of the pro field ran quicker than her. So yeah, that's not bad. Elsvisser was at second, Jocelyn McCauley in a third. So yeah, very exciting racing on the women's field. Yeah, on the men's side, uh, Stephen McKenna took the win there and he was very stoked about it. He put on his social media. Nick Heldon in second and Ben Hamilton in third. Uh, obviously, we spoke about uh, Chelsea's daughter not being at the T100. That's obviously her reason. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty good reason I would say and that obviously stamps her ticket for the Ironman World Champs in Nice later on this year we also there was one other race this weekend quite surprisingly actually Challenge Israman mm. which we didn't really expect to uh, to go ahead considering everything that's happened there but it did go ahead interesting though we looked at the PTO uh, strength of field score and definitely the lowest one we've ever seen uh, for comparison Ironman New Zealand on the women's side the strength of field score was 81.8 uh, it's kind of like a scale out of 100 based mm. on a, what ranked athletes are starting. Uh, the challenges are men, 4.6. Yeah. Yeah. Not many people there. Anyway, it was won by Rebecca Robisch from Germany on the women's side and Marcel Bolbert uh, also from Germany on the men's side. Congratulations to them. Yeah. And obviously, we have some exciting racing coming up. We've talked plenty about the T100 already, but it is the first WTCS season of this Olympic year. It's going to be in Abu Dhabi, and it's basically all of the main contenders, well, most of the main contenders are going to be racing. On the men's field, we've got the likes of Alex E. Hayden Wild. Well, the, the three medalists from the last Olympics are going to be lining up and I think everyone is going to be in prime condition. Yeah, you want to see what it's... kind of shape Christian Blumenfeld is in yeah. at this stage. I mean, it's six months almost to the day uh, before the Olympic Games goes off. So you were all very interested to see what kind of form. Obviously, you don't want them to be in prime form mm. right now. But you also don't want them to be struggling with injuries and not fit at all. So <laughs> we'll be interested. Yeah. We'll be watching very closely. On the women's side, uh, also looking at the form of Beth Potter, Cassandra Brogan, who were first and second mm -hmm. last season. Georgia Taylor-Brown coming back from injury. Taylor Nib, obviously, uh, we'll be watching. And interestingly, Gwen Jorgensen has made mm. the start list for this one. We've been following Gwen Jorgensen's journey for a while now. She tried to get back into triathlon, get back onto these uh, start lists, get her points up so she could get into the start of the WTCS race so she get enough points to get up the rankings so that she could potentially be chosen for that American team going to Paris. Well, she's still on the right trajectory and this one will really be yeah. a telling race. So we see how she goes there. I think um, looking at the women's race, that's a different type of race to the men's, isn't it? Because you've got so many Brits and Americans who are still trying to get in the team, whereas those three men that we've just mentioned, for example, are pretty yeah, much got their, got their slots in their nation. So, yeah, there's um, everything to fight for on both the British and American squads mm. and a few other squads. Uh, because they the haven't finalised well. their teams mm. yet, uh, which is, yeah, it's, well, someone's going to lose out, which is disappointing. But, yeah, hopefully the, the best ones can come to the fore now as these races start and put their, their names forward to be selected for Paris in 2024.
All right, now it's time to look at your pin board. Some of the stuff you guys have sent us, remember, for March, we're looking for all your scenic training locations. You know those amazing pictures that you take when you're out and about training or your pain cave if that's the only place you can train hopefully you're getting out and about and the weather's turning and you're getting some scenic places uh this week we've got one from molly from nairobi kenya she's actually from new york but she went to nairobi kenya i normally swim train in the ocean or the windowless basement pools of new york city but on vacation in kenya i had some epic swims i bought a swim parachute and turned a hotel pool into a small pond and to my great surprise our camp in the masai mara also had a pool baboons came at sunrise and sunset to drink from the pool and one day swimming near sunset we exchanged some glances what was I doing in their pool? Uh, needless to say, I was unfamiliar. As, unfamiliar. as someone unfamiliar with baboons, I swam breaststroke with my head up for a while to stay aware. I, <laughs> I think even if you both. were familiar with well, baboons, you would still do that. <laughs> I wouldn't be too worried about baboons, but uh, yeah, they're okay. <laughs> baboons are your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe maybe if you spend more time with them, you get to know their language, James. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Next one from David um, at the Winter Challenge Triathlon in South Carolina. He says, enjoying an early spring paddle before the big event, an off-road triathlon that has a seven mile run six mile paddle and a 10 mile bike no pretty, swimming but look pretty at pretty scenic oh yeah. that looks beautiful and then Monica sent us a little video of her running around Prague uh, ha hello from Prague where I study I'm currently training for a marathon today's menu was a nice 30 kilometer long run and she's standing on the bridge in the in the city and yeah a nice city runs always good Lovely. Um, Ian, with another video here, says trail runs on rare sunny lunch times definitely help with the winter training plan. Well, yes, it's hard we... to get a sunny run. I mean, that's just up the road from us, and it's hard to get a sunny run in winter. He did well there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> blue skies, really nice. Jared from Utah. This lake is only an eight-minute drive from where we live. My wife and I love training here. It's at 5,100 feet elevation, and there's a wide gravel loop around the lake that's just four, just over four miles long. Steeper trails branch off to make our run bike workouts as hard as we want. We just have to make sure to dodge the frequent snow and occasional mud puddle. It does look pretty scenic place to train. Nice. Mm. Oh, these are just Doing giving me well. envy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris on, oh, the big island of Hawaii on Mauna Loa says, needing some elevation to complete our bike workout. My wife Tina and I decided to check out the November 2022 eruption site where Mauna Loa Access Road was cut off by the lava flow. Yeah, road closed there. Yeah, that's your turnaround point, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? that's for sure. your turnaround point, yeah. Uh, and then from Turkey, uh, we had this one, which is from Ali uh, in the Taurus Mountains of Turkey. No shortage of places to swim Europe around lakes mediterranean sea and both road and trail for biking and running these are all snaps hill running close to our home yeah really nice looks really nice scenic. little montage thank yeah. you for that ali and sarah our final admission for this week in the rocky mountains in alberta canada uh, winter training where fat biking through snow covered trails and trail running up picturesque hikes like kent ridge are just another day in paradise well you said it stunning place for a I dog mean, walk oh. well keep those pictures coming for the rest of march we are looking for your scenic training locations so wherever you're training for your triathlon we're gonna see some pretty pictures of where that is Say what? <laughs> okay, time to look at some comments you guys have left under our videos. If you haven't seen already, Heather did a very interesting video on training when you're pregnant, and we got some comments under it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I Campbell said, getting pregnant so you can film training content for GTA. Now that's commitment. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, Keith Huckfield said, very similar, this is real dedication to video concept. Just kidding, congrats. I know, I mean, we work hard here at GTN yeah. to make great content, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> that would be going the extra mile. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of congratulations missions too, obviously, for Heather. Yeah, no, there's been some, um, quite a few people who I think find it quite interesting. So do spread the word on that. It's quite niche, quite niche content for us on GTN, but hopefully it can reach as many women as possible. Yeah, next we'll get her running with a stroller and see how fast she can run. Uh, I might just borrow the stroller for that one. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm done with it. Uh, uh, coming up on the show, on the channel this week, Week, uh, we have finally our FTP test the test where we all did separate FTP tests and then we came back to see if we could actually hold that FTP for an hour. Uh, it's going to make for some interesting viewing and even if uh, you're not interested in the extra content you can see us suffering because we definitely suffered. We also headed up to Norwich to do a pro triathlete on a cheap VARC versus a cheap tra no versus an amateur triathlete on a pro bike and uh, that's also going to make for some interesting viewing because we drafted in none other than Joe Skipper for that one. Oh yeah um, and whilst we were in Norfolk we also were put to work in a tri bike shop and that video is now up on screen if you want to click on that and also you can go and check out that pregnancy video if you haven't yet seen it. Thanks for watching hit that like button if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's show. Thanks for watching goodbye.